everyone and welcome back to the breakdown today i'm going to be teaching you how to make a server in minecraft 1.16.3 yep you heard that right minecraft 1.16.3 is out and in this video we're going to be showing you every single step of getting a server and playing on that server with your friends it's all going to be covered in this video. First and foremost though, I do want to tell you what this server isn't. It isn't a 24 hour server, meaning it's only going to be up and running when your computer is up and running. It's also, because it's running on your own computer, going to need decent hardware, right? You can't run this off of a laptop that, you know, is a few years old, for example. You're going to need a decent computer, a desktop computer that's something that's stable, or a laptop that, you know, is newer with, you know, good heat specs and things like that to be able to run your server on your computer. And last but not least, because this is hosted on your own computer's resources, it's also hosted on your own network, meaning it's hosted on your own at-home internet setup, basically. With that, whoever gets the IP can do things like DNS you, which means kind of take your internet offline, and even figure out where you live down to your latitude and longitude coordinates, meaning this server is only for your friends, your family, people that you can trust. But... What if you don't want a server that's hosted on your own computer? What if you want a server that's open all the time and it's 24 hours a day and you don't have to worry about the hardware side of it? What if you don't have great hardware? What if you can play Minecraft servers fine, but you don't have good enough hardware to like run a server? Or last but not least, what if you just don't want to even have to worry about DDoS protection? Well, in that case, you can check out Apex Minecraft hosting at the first link down below because they're going to handle all of those problems for you. At Apex, you can set up a server in just one click. You don't have to port forward. You don't have to worry about the hardware. You don't have to worry about, you know, any network security. They take care of everything. All you have to do is go on, select the server that you want. In this case, it could be a Minecraft 1.16.3 vanilla server, or it could be a paper server, and you can run plugins on your server. Or if you want to play a mod pack, they have one click installation of so many mod packs. Your options are endless at Apex, but if you wanted to set up a quick server like we're doing in the screen right now, you can do it in under five minutes, like a vanilla Minecraft server. And then once you're all said and done, you get an IP address, you join that IP, and that's it. You have your own Minecraft server, and you don't have to worry about the hardware or anything like that. Plus, if you do have any issues, Apex has 24 hours, seven day a week support. They're up 24 hours a day, seven days a week, helping you out. Meaning if it's 4 a.m., you can go on Apex. There's a little chat bubble on the bottom right, and you can click on that and get help from a real live person right away. And it's truly amazing. We love Apex so much that we put our money where our mouth is and host our own server, playdartbreakdowncraft.com on Apex Minecraft Hosting. So if you want a server that is up all the time, that you don't have to worry about network security, that anyone can join, and you don't even have to worry about the hardware because Apex takes care of all of it, you can check out Apex at the first link down below the breakdown.xyz slash Apex. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and and get a server set up assuming that you're okay with hosting it on your own computer and all of that stuff. The first step is actually coming to this link here. It's going to be the second link down below. I will tell you now that I will easily get confused what link we're on in the description because as you can see up here at the top of your screen, there are a lot of them. However, every single link here is in the description down below. So that is something you need to know. Every single one of these links is linked in the description down below because guess what? I actually pre-write these descriptions and pre-write everything. That way, exactly what I'm showing in the video is what's going to be in the description. But nevertheless, once you are here on this link, the second one down below, you want to scroll down until you see this, Download Minecraft. The reason you want to click on this is because it's going to take us to where we can download the Minecraft server files. When we do click on it, it will open in a new tab. And then, as you can see, Download Minecraft underscore server 1.16.3.jar. So as you can see, that's what that's going to be. When we click on that, it's going to download in the bottom left. And we do want to keep this file. As you can see, it's going to ask us if we want to keep it. We do want to keep it on um, Mozilla Firefox. It'll pop in the center of your screen and ask you if you want to save it. You do want to save it. Now we go ahead and minimize our browser. Here on our desktop, we do have the server.jar. I also have an unconfirmed file. You must, most likely won't have that, but if you do, just kind of drag it to the side. It will disappear here in a second. Now, if this isn't on your desktop, no worries. It's going to be found in your downloads folder. To find that, click the little Windows icon to the top left of my screen, bottom left of your screen, but click on that little Windows icon on the top or bottom left, and then go ahead and type in downloads, right like so. You have this downloads file folder in Windows. Click on that, and then go ahead and drag and drop downloads to your desktop. Once server.jar is on your desktop, you want to go ahead and right click on the desktop, create a new folder. You can name this folder whatever you want. I'm going to name it play.breakdowncraft.com. Why am I naming it that? Because that is our own incredible Minecraft server. We've got great protect survival, amazing factions, custom skyblock, you'll love it. So if you're looking for a great top-notch network Minecraft server, play.breakdowncraft.com is the one for you. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and take the server.dar and drag it into the breakdowncraft folder here we created. You can name this folder whatever you want. I just named it play.breakdowncraft.com because why not? I mean, it's an amazing server. You all should know about it. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and open up the folder here. Now, once we've got this server.jar, it should look like this. Now, viewers may not say .jar at the end. It might just say server. If you want it to say .jar, if that's going to bother you, you can click view up here at the top and then click on file name extensions there. So click on file name extensions and boom, you now have the .jar there. But nevertheless, once you've got this server here, what you want to do is double click on it. Now, when you double click on it, it should go ahead and act like it's loading some stuff and kind of bring in some files here. As you can see, it has logs. It has, you know, the server.properties, the ul.txt, all that stuff. 
If it doesn't load that stuff, it's because you don't have the correct version of Java installed. So to do that, you want to go to the description down below and go here. This is our in-depth tutorial for Minecraft servers and specifically downloading and installing Java for Minecraft servers. You're interested in starting a Minecraft server after all, so it would only make sense you need this version of Java for your server. So come here, download this, go through this simple and easy three-step process, and then once you've done that, you should be able to double-click on that file. But in some cases, you won't be able to. In some cases, it'll open up with WinRAR. It'll open up with some weird program. If that's the case, you need to run the jar fix. This is in the description down below as well, and it's also a quick and easy three-step process, but all you do is download it, run the jar fix, and it's going to take all the .jar files on your computer and link them to Java, right like so, and work perfectly. It's going to make everything work great, look great, it's going to be incredible. And then finally, you'll be able to minimize your browser, and you'll be able to double-click on that server.jar to generate these files. Now, your server's not started yet. That's because you need to create this ula.txt. So go ahead and double-click on that file, and it will open up in Notepad, right like so. Then you want to go to this link here, and as long as you agree to the Minecraft EULA found there, you want to change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. T-R-U-E, exactly like that. And then go ahead and do File, Save, and then we can close out of the ULA.txt, and now when we double click on server.jar, it's going to go ahead and open everything up and give us a nice GUI to kind of manage our server, see our server console, and stuff like that. So that's all going to be good to go. We're just kind of waiting here for that to happen, and there we go. Now one thing I will say is I did have some RAM go back to my computer earlier, and this does require a decent amount of computer to run a server, right? That's what we talked about at the beginning of this. So I hope there are no issues or anything like that, but as you can see, it is taking a while to start generating, you know, some of these files, and we're using, like, almost all of the server to do that. But nevertheless, hopefully we're all good, but I do want to say that here, that if you do have any, like, glitches in the video, we'll try our best to edit around those, but if they're there, that's why. I did have some RAM go bad earlier, and Minecraft's pretty RAM intensive, so I usually am using over 20 gigabytes of RAM, and now I'm limiting myself to just 16 on my entire system, so we're going to try our best. We've been trying our best to push through this today, but that could be an issue. Nevertheless, once we're here, we want to go ahead and type stop, so STOP, just to close out of this. At this point, we've kind of have proof of concept. The server's up and running, but your friends can't join it. However, if you do want to test and make sure your server is joinable, you can do that from here. And luckily, the same thing you can do that with, test join your server, is how you're always going to join your server. So let's go ahead and do that. We can minimize our, you know, kind of command prompt here, the kind of GUI managing the server. We can also minimize the play.breakdowncraft.com profile, our server folder. And what we want to do is click on the little Windows icon. Again, it's in the top left of me. It's probably in the bottom left of your screen. But click on that little Windows icon on the top or bottom left. And then go ahead and this time, instead of, you know, typing in downloads, we want to type in CMD. And you'll have command prompt here. Go ahead and click on command prompt. And then in command prompt, you want to type IPCONFIG. IP config, all one word, and hit enter. And then have a bunch of numbers up here. But specifically, what you need here are two numbers. So we're going to go ahead and open up Notepad. And then in Notepad, we're going to type these two numbers. The two numbers we're interested in, well, it's the IPv4 address. So we're going to type IPv4. And for us, that's going to be 192.168.1.123, exactly like that. Yours may be different from that. And if it is, that's OK. That's why we're finding it via command prompt and not just using some specific number. Now, we are also going to need our default gateway. Our default gateway is what we're going to use later to port forward to allow our friends to join. But we need it, so we're going to go ahead and get it here. So default gateway, right like so, hit colon. And then now our default gateway is 192.168.1.1. Now, for you, it may look like your default gateway has a bunch of numbers and letters in it. If that's the case, there's probably a default gateway directly under that, okay? So if you have a bunch of letters and numbers, there's probably a number directly under that with no, like, information next to it. It's just going to be blank over here and then a number. And if that's the case, that's your actual default gateway. You want to get the one that's just numbers. Numbers. If you have one that's numbers and letters, and one that's just numbers, get the one that's just numbers. Now we can close out a command prompt. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open up Minecraft. And once we're in Minecraft, I'm going to join the server. Now this is how you're always going to be able to join the server. Some people will be able to join the server via their public IP, but some ISPs block that. Some ISPs don't allow you to connect via your public IP back to yourself. So if that's the case, you're going to join off the TV address that we found back here, while your friends will join off of your public IP address. But nevertheless, once we've loaded into Minecraft here, we can go ahead and click on multiplayer, and then go into create direct connect, right like so, a direct connection, and then we're going to take that IPv4 address, we're just going to copy it, come over back into Minecraft, and paste it, and click join server. Then it's going to connect right on into the server, right like so, bada bing, bada boom, there we go, we are now in the server, and most importantly, if we go back over here, we'll be able to see that happen. So as you can see in our server console here, we go ahead, I don't know, what side do we want to put it on? We'll put it on this side. But nevertheless, as you can see in the server console here, 
Nick's Games has joined the game. Now you can op yourself, type OP and then your username. So that's going to allow you to do things like GMC and kick people and all that stuff. So now we come in here and we do game mode creative. We can do that. We couldn't do that if we weren't opt. Now, at this point, you can join your server. And again, you can always join off of your IPv4 address, even if you can't join off of your public IP. The only people that have to join off of your public IP is actually your friends, your family, things like that, that you want to join the server. They join off of your public IP, but you will always be able to join off of your local IPv4 address. Now, let's go ahead and, as you can see, the server's up and running. You can play around on this server, but I'm guessing you want your friends to be able to join, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, normally I would keep Minecraft open, but because of the RAM issue I mentioned, we're not going to do that. I'm also going to stop the server over here. Never, ever just X out of the server menu. What you want to do is always come here into this text box and type STOP. Stop. Exactly like that and hit enter. That's going to shut down the server properly, make sure everything's saved and all that stuff. If you just click the X, it can cause some weird things in your computer, so don't do that. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and get our port forward going. To do that and to get started, we want to go ahead and open up our server folder. Then we want to click on server.properties. Now for me, this is going to automatically open in Notepad. You may have to select it to open in Notepad, but no matter what, you want to open it with Notepad. Then you want to draw, uh, scroll down until you see server-ip equals. Then we want to copy our IPv4 address that we found earlier and paste it next to server-ip equals, right like so. Then we want to go ahead and do file, save, and save the server.properties. Now we want to go ahead and open up our browser, right? We want to open up our web browser. We want to open up a brand new tab. So as you can see, we've got a new tab up here. We could type in the breakdown.xyz if we wanted to. We could type in youtube.com. We could type in all that stuff if we wanted to. But what we're more focused on doing here is actually copying our default gateway from Notepad that we found earlier and pasting it up here where we would normally type in a website, right? So go ahead and just paste that raw number that you found earlier right up here where you normally type in a website and hit enter. That is then going to take us to a page that most likely looks completely different from what you see on your screen right now. This is the Linksys router login, but yours is again most likely completely different and that is perfectly okay. Why is that okay? Well, we're gonna show you all the different names that port forwarding could be, so don't worry about it. But no matter what, you're gonna have some sort of a login box here. Now mine's on the right hand side. Yours may pop in from the top. It may be in the center of the screen. Who knows where your login box is, but you're probably gonna have some sort of login box asking for a username and a password. You can find your router's username and password using the tutorial in the description down below. This gives you five different methods on finding your router's username and password, and most likely people find it by method number three, at worst method number four, and you have your pa router's password and you are logged in. For me, it's just a few simple clicks. There we go, and now we can click sign in and log right on into our router. Now, at this point, you might be wondering, Nick, your router looks completely different. You're telling me I have to do this crazy thing called port forwarding, and I have no clue how I'm going to do that. Well, no worries. The solution is pretty simple. Solution number one is go watch this video. It's linked in the description down below. And while it may not have your router in it, it's got the most popular ones, the Netgears, the, the Linksys, the AT&T, the Verizon. Those are all in there plus some. However, even if your router isn't in this video, there's most likely a router that's going to have a similar port forward setup to as what we go over in this video. So you want to go here, you want to go through that video, you want to get it set up. And then even if your router's not mentioned, go through the video, watch through the entire video because you're going to pick up all the different names and all the different stuff that port forwarding could be on your router. And then when you get in your router, you're going to be like, it's probably in here. No, oh, it is in here. Boom, there we go. And you found it because you've learned all the terms, learned all the different stuff. I'm also going to give you a few terms as we go through our router here. So for me, port forwarding is actually in security. And then it is going to be in apps and gaming. Now for you, it may be in advanced. It may be in advanced, advanced. It may be in NAT forwarding, NAT forwarding. It may be in NAT gaming, NAT gaming. It may be in apps and gaming as it is for me. It, is, it could be in security. It could be in your admin tab. It could be in your firewall tab. I've seen it held in there before. Or it could just be called straight up port forwarding, port triggering, something like that. But for me, it is in security. And then it is in apps and gaming. And then it is in single port forwarding. Now if you have like port range or port forwarding, you always want to do port forward or single port forwarding in this case. Now, once you're there, it may have something like this where you need to add a new single port forward or you may just have a bunch of empty boxes. If you have a bunch of empty boxes, just go with the first one that's empty. Otherwise, you have to click add a new single port forward or add a new port forward. For the name or ID, it's always going to be Minecraft. For your external port, your internal port, for anything involving the word port, as a matter of fact, you're going to put 25565. So if the word port appears, 25565. So external port, hey, there's that word port. We're going to put in 25565. Guess what? Internal port, hey, there's that word port again. We're going to do 25565 there as well. Anything that mentions the word port is going to have 25565. 
for our protocol, we're gonna do TCP slash UDP, UDP slash TCP, or both, whatever it requires to make sure both are selected. If you can't select both for whatever reason, just do your port forward twice, once for TCP and once for UDP, leaving everything else the same, and you'll get the same effect. However, most routers today have the ability to just select both in some way. Now for device IP, this is gonna be your IPv4 address. So in our case, 192.168.1, dot one two three now yours may be completely different from that and that's okay however you may not have an option for a device ip at all instead you may have a device list you may have a list of all the devices connected to your internet network if that's the case you want to select the device that you are starting the server on right so you want to select the device that you are starting the server on and then you'll be good to go in our case though we have the ip so we're going to enter that there now we can go ahead and save our port forward, apply, okay, all of that stuff. However, some people do need an external IP, right? If that's the case, that's gonna be your public IP. Luckily, everyone who's watching this video right now needs their public IP because that's how their friends are gonna join their server. So if we go ahead and click on what's my IP in the description down below, that's gonna take you to our website where we're gonna show you your IP address, right? Every website you visit gives your IP, we're just taking it and giving it right back to you. So nevertheless, as you can see here, here is our IP. Now you can see 100 at the end, and that's all you can see there. We've also blacked out this down here, but this is the information someone can get from your IP address, your country, your region, your city, and even under your latitude and longitude coordinates, all from your IP address. Now, I've went ahead and copied this, right? Again, you can see 100 here, so you know we're using the same number later, but overall, we are blacking this out because you don't want to give this out to anybody and everybody. Now we can come back here and if we need it on our port forward, we can enter it, but then we can click apply, okay, all that stuff. Now if we minimize our browser, we can go ahead and start our server. To do that, go ahead and double click on that server.jar. I'm gonna let that start up, do a quick jump cut until it is, and then we're gonna open up Minecraft. Actually, I'll go ahead and let the server start up, open up Minecraft, and then we'll be good. So I'm gonna do a jump cut until all that's done, and then I'll meet you to join the server. All right, there we go. I'm gonna make this a, uh, a little smaller if we can. Nope. Okay, we can't without removing the console, that's fine. Anyway, I'm gonna make this a little smaller there. But nevertheless, we have Minecraft open, we have the server open. Normally, I would never do a jump cut there. But again, we have that RAM issue that we're dealing with. I wanna make sure that we're not you know, overloading the RAM on our system. So because of that, I had to do a jump cut and I do apologize for that, but this is where we're at right now with our current setup. Can't get RAM here today, and I need to get this video out for you all. But nevertheless, let's go ahead, and once we're here, we can click on multiplayer. Now this time, we're gonna click direct connect, and we're gonna direct connect to our public IP. Now I'm gonna paste this in here, and again, you can see 100 at the end, but the rest of it is blacked out because we don't wanna release this to anybody and everybody. Once we have our IP entered there, we can go ahead and click join server, and it will connect us right on into the server over here on the right. Now. Our ISP that we use here allows us to connect back to ourselves via our public IP. However, if you can't join via your public IP there, don't worry about it. Send it to one of your friends that you want to join your server. And if they can join, you're good to go. You can just join off of your IPv4 address that we like joined the server with earlier, right? However, if your friends can't join off of your public IP address, it could be one of a few things. It could be a firewall, either on your computer, such as Windows Defender, or a firewall on your router. Now, if it's on your router, just click around for your firewall. You'll find it, add it as an exception, or allow people through port forwards to connect to you. However, if it's Windows Defender, which is a good place to usually start, we have a link in the description down below, which is our tutorial for Windows Defender and how to allow Minecraft through it for Minecraft servers. So if you're having an issue there, you can check out Windows Defender and our tutorial on it in the description and down below. It's gonna help you out, get Java set up to allow connections to it. Now, it can also be a antivirus, so check that on your computer, make sure either an exception is added or you turn off your antivirus to test. If your friends can join, if your antivirus is off, you know it's that, so before you you know, turn it back on, make an exception, and then you'll be good to go. However, it could also be an issue with your port forward. So we did go through port forwarding in this video, but make sure that you've added in the IPs correctly. Your local IP address, your IPv4 address can change, and that can sometimes mess up your port forward. So go ahead, make sure it's not that as well, and, and confirm things there. But that is pretty much that. After that troubleshooting, you should definitely be able to play Minecraft with your friends on your very own server, hosted on your own computer. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below and come play with us on our own server, play.breakdowncraft.com, the best Minecraft server in the multiverse. I can all wait to see you online there. Thank you so, so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more incredible content on servers, Minecraft plugins, how to get Minecraft plugins on your server, all of that stuff. But nevertheless, my name is Nick. This has been The Breakdown. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'm out. Peace.